This video is for D1.3 on mutations in gene editing, and the standard level content will focus specifically on mutations. Now, DNA is an incredibly stable molecule, and mutations are very rare. That's because we have several ways of noticing and correcting any errors that happen in replication, and those complementary base pairing rules ensure that correct nucleotides are added when we're synthesizing new DNA strands. However, mutations still do occur, and it's important to note that they are both rare and random. They can fall under several categories. So if this is my original DNA strand, and I experience a substitution mutation, then I can have a new strand that looks something like this, where I have one base that has been substituted for another. A different type of mutation is called an insertion. An insertion mutation is when we insert an extra nucleotide somewhere in that sequence. So actually, sorry, this is my extra nucleotide. Everything else remains the same, but we have an extra nucleotide here in insertion. And then deletion is exactly what it sounds like. In deletion, we have the removal of a nucleotide, and that's going to result in a shorter DNA sequence. The consequence of these mutations can largely depend on where they are, whether they're in a coding region that makes a protein or a non-coding region. We'll focus specifically on base substitution mutations, right, that are occurring in coding regions. So we want to be on the lookout for how they might change that amino acid sequence of the polypeptide. We have three different effects here. We can have a same sense mutation. So a mutation still occurs, but there's not a change in the amino acid sequence. So that means that my codons of mRNA will be different, but that those codons still code for the same amino acid. That refers back to that degenerate genetic code. Some texts or some teachers may refer to this as a silent mutation, and that's because it does not change the amino acid sequence. These mutations can also cause a nonsense mutation. This means that instead of a normal amino acid, we're going to have a stop codon instead. And when a stop codon is read by that ribosome, it literally stops the translation process. So this will result in a polypeptide that is shorter than what it should be. And finally, we can have a missense mutation. This causes a different amino acid to be inserted into the chain. Like with sickle cell anemia, glutamic acid is substituted for by valine. In our genetic code, we have, you and I, have different base sequences. And those different base sequences are the results of mutations. Areas in our genetic code that have different possibilities for nucleotides are called SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms. So again, these are areas in which our genetics codes differ due to the accumulation of mutations over time. It should be noted that you and I have an almost identical genome. Most of our genetic base sequences are identical. We only differ in these SNPs, these single nucleotide polymorphisms, and again, that is the result of mutations. So let's look at this in an example. Here I have some um, base sequences of mRNA, and they are read three at a time in those groups called codons. So each codon creates what's called a reading frame. That means I'm reading them in groups of three. Now, if I just substitute one uh, base for another, then that does not change my reading frame. The reading frame remains the same. It could still change the amino acid sequence, but it doesn't change the number of amino acids in the reading frame, or I shouldn't say number of amino acids um, in our polypeptide.
Now, an insertion or a deletion can change those reading frames. So if I insert an amino, or if I insert some kind of base here like that, and then I try to group my codons together, I'm getting an entirely different group and they will be read in very different ways. So this last codon, for example, in my original sequence, I would have looked up GUC in my codon chart and now I'm looking up AGU. That is going to be wildly different in terms of the amino acid that it creates, okay? So if I add one or if I delete one, that is going to cause a problem. Here's an example of a deletion. If I delete this one from the middle here, then I'm reading my frame like this, a codon here, a codon here, and then I don't even have a third um, base to read over here. So you can see that this causes a massive change in the codons that would then be translated into amino acids. So again, these are usually harmful and um, it's definitely something that is going to cause big changes to our polypeptide at the end. There are two major causes of mutations, one of which is an error in replication. So it's possible that the wrong nucleotide is laid down in that sequence. It does happen, but it's relatively rare, again, due to the proofreading and the complementary base pairing. Mutagens can also cause changes in the DNA base sequence. Mutagens are things like radiation or things like chemical substances that chemically cause different bases to be present in that DNA. If you have not already studied natural selection yet, great. I want you to really kind of file this away in your brain. Mutations occur in individuals and mutations are random. Whether or not they are beneficial doesn't change the likelihood of them happening. So for example, if I am finding that my environment is changing, I can't just wish to have a mutation that gives me a better chance of surviving in that environment. It doesn't happen. There is no natural mechanism for creating a mutation and certainly not for creating a specific mutation that might be helpful at that time. Mutations can occur anywhere in the genome, but some are more likely to occur than others. So if we think about coding versus non-coding regions, okay, they're gonna have very different effects there. And then most mutations that occur during an organism's lifetime are not passed to offspring. So that's got some big ramifications for our understanding of natural selection. Even if I do have a beneficial mutation, unless it's in some of my cells that produce gametes, that mutation will not be passed along to my offspring. So when we talk about natural selection and we talk about mutations creating variation, again, it's not a mutation because you want them. Mutations are random. They occur in individuals, not populations. They become more prominent in populations via natural selection, but well, that's another topic for another time. There are lots of ways to categorize the cells in your body, one of which is to group them into either somatic cells, like your body cells, a skin cell, a muscle cell, a liver cell, something like that, or a germ cell. Germ cells are cells that produce gametes. They're capable of undergoing meiosis. Let's talk about mutations that occur in somatic cells first. These mutations are not passed to offspring because those cells are not used to create gametes for reproduction. So for example, um, oncogene mutations that cause cancer. If I am exposed to UV radiation and I get a mutation in one of the my skin cells, okay, um, that may cause changes to my body in, during my lifetime, but it would not be passed to my offspring. That's very different than mutations that occur in germ cells. So these would be like in the testes of males or the ovaries of females, okay? These can be passed to offspring, even if they're not beneficial. There is no really like natural selection process happening for gamete production, that's just meiosis. 
Most of these are harmful, so it's very important to minimize exposure. That's why if you go to get an x-ray or something that exposes your body to harmful radiation, you're going to find that they put like a lead jacket over the parts of your body um, where your gametes are produced, again, to prevent those germ cells from experiencing mutations that might then be passed along to offspring. Just in case you haven't already studied inheritance, a quick review here. Um, our chromosomes come in pairs, one from your mom and one from your dad, and we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, um, and those chromosomes are called homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes have the same genes in the same location, but may have different alleles. Alleles are various versions of a gene. So here's a case where the allele from each parent is different. They are sending like different messages. So for example, one might say, have type B blood, and the other one might say, no, have type O blood, something like that, okay? New alleles arise from mutations, okay? So if we think about what makes an allele different, well, they have different base sequences. Remember, our chromosomes are made up of DNA. So these genes um, are made up of DNA and the base sequences for this gene are going to be slightly different from the base sequence of that gene. And those base sequences, the differences in those sequences are the result of mutations. And this is one of the things that leads to an increase in genetic variation. It's important to note that mutations um, can be good, they can be bad, or they can be silent. Most of them are either silent, like they don't make a difference in the amino acid sequence, or they just occur in a non-coding region, or are harmful. Rare beneficial mutations, however, can give an organism an advantage in its environment, and that's when we wanna start thinking about natural selection. Okay, so if we think about this process as a whole, theme D, continuity and change, environments change. Organisms that have survived changes in that environment, or I shouldn't even say organisms, right? Like maybe we should say species, okay, must change. And that process of a changing environment, yet still being able to survive those changes, that is driven by mutations. Without this genetic variation, then that species might not have those beneficial mutations to survive that change.